All right, we are going blind into Aisha versus uh, August. And I realize they are both playing on uh, alts, so Aisha is cottoned on, and uh, Clifford Hammerslide is... Or August is Clifford Hammerslide. He's the guy with the Salamence Koala avatar. All right, let's get into it. DOS versus Tina O. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, DOS... Uh, gets up a hazard and then decides whether to go for the second hazard or switch out. Tina O Dracos into Shadow Sneak or trying to hit the thing on the switch. Usually trying to EQ Diog on the switch. There's spikes. That's already a good start. Wow, that is bulky. Uh, okay, so that's a very physically defensive uh, Deoxys speed. I have to imagine it's trying to survive some stuff from T-Tar without the need of a Culberberry, which would then in turn free it up to run something else like a Lumberry, which is a you know, a great adaptation for Deoxys. I like that variant a lot. Uh, and uh, it's going to be helpful here because this is clearly an off-physical Giratina. Maybe even Jolly, uh, which is great for the mid-game, but not so much for anti-leading bulky DOS purposes. It generally gets the job done, but not against the, something like this, whereas Draco Sneak is pretty pretty guaranteed. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, and only having spikes on this thing also makes it really helpful... Uh, alongside, a, uh, alongside a rocker. Being able to spread out the responsibilities is uh, generally nice. So, the, a wisp misses and that uh, allows the third layer of spikes to go up unencumbered and now Dialga comes in and DOS hasn't even gone down and this is this is getting pretty brutal. I think that, uh, that wisp might have been a little unnecessary and uh, but at least there's Blissey coming in here to not take damage from the that was a good Dragon Pulse. Again, this is why I really love uh, Draco Meteor on support Dialga, because, I, especially if you have Roar, but it's just so nice to be able to threaten to actually Oko things like Latios and Garatina Origin that might try to go one-on-one -on -one with you. And Dragon Pulse is nice and all, but I, I just really love uh, Draco on it, uh, even w without special attack EVs. So now the rocks go up on both sides, so uh, Aisha has full hazards, and... So I have to assume this is some sort of a stallish team from August. So, uh, yeah, not with the Tina O versus DOS thing. Like, if you're gonna let, the, I mean, the Will o Wisp has sucked for sure. But if you're gonna, I don't know. I I don't think there was a reason to Wisp as opposed to Dragon Clawing. Like, Wisp is nice for catching a switch, but it's very unlikely that you catch a switch there when the first Dragon Claw did less than fifty. I think you got to just go right for the the second one. Uh, and then you can Willisp on the third turn at least. And the basic idea is if DOS is going to get like the second or third layer, it it can't do that and still be alive. You have to make it pay for it somehow. Uh, that's why EQing the Diogus switch is generally fine because big payoff if it works and if it doesn't then DOS at least goes down. And whereas here, you know, full hazards and death fodder so. Uh, and there's the Roar on Dialga, so another... Re I, I like uh, Draco Meteor on Roar, uh, Sport Dialga, especially because Roar prevents uh, Pokemon taking advantage of your minus two special attack and setting up on you. So, uh, and Roar is also great in general. So in comes another Dialga, and uh, this Dialga with uh, leftovers, I mean, they're not going to be hurting each other, but you know, August Dialga is starting out at 75 as opposed to... Full, so we don't know if it's bulk up or some sort of other fancy set, but uh, could be assumed it's roar of its own. So safe to is fairly safe to assume bulk up roar, uh, the sub bulk up roar set. As uh, Aisha decides, look, I'm not going to risk any speed tire roar stuff. I'm just going to get guaranteed damage on it. Uh, I want to, you know, it, it can be annoying if it starts setting up, and I want to just chunk it before it does anything obnoxious. Brings it down to roughly half as it roars in the Deoxys, gets fainted there at least. And now it comes Mew 2. And if this is Taunt Wisp, then this is uh, the most irritating thing for a defensive team, but it's just Aura Sphere. Uh, but Life Orb, and that might still be enough to take out the Jirachi. Uh, okay, Fire. yeah, August checks for Fire Blast nicely. So what's interesting about Fire Blast, Aura Sphere, is that you also want Ice Beam and Thunder. And that means you are probably not going to be able to fit self-destruct so as long as this thing doesn't i mean full hazards makes this hard to switch into like directly into an or sphere but this blissey actually completely assuming it is those things 
Uh, this Mewtwo is pretty much unwallable for any team without a Blissey, but when there is a Blissey in the picture, then yeah. That's what the hazards are for, though. And uh, Diog is not exactly being punished for switching in here because it shrugs off rocks with lefties, and Seismic Toss is going to take a while to burn through its big HP stat. So uh, August is certainly making an aggressive attempt, though. He's not being too passive. And uh, here comes Fori, so this is uh, another old-school style of stall. And the uh, thing is, the best thing, I, I mean, it is, you generally don't see fire move on uh, this, you know, flamethrower fire blast on support Diaga. You see thunder because it's used to handle Kyogre. So, for, you can threaten to spin here, but that would just be a desperate move that would not get anywhere against the very obvious Tina O switch. And I think August would be better off going for spikes to really limit the Dialga and uh, limit the Mewtwo more as well. Um, and by putting down spikes, then August makes his own offensive assault of Giratina O and maybe a Scarfer like Kyogre as the last Pokemon. Uh, makes that even better. You know, it could be also a Latias or something, but you know, still, uh, you're not going to wall this game forever, so you have to make your offensive Pokemon more threatening. You have to close the window on how on uh, the opposing offensive of Pokemon's uh, capacity for longevity. So spiking, I think, is definitely the move here. So there's the Tina O. And Lugia! Okay, it was, I think that, that was a case of being too afraid of the uh, the fire move. When I mean, it's used for Kyogre Insurance, so they got, a, they got a Thunder. So, again, Lugia would love having a spike down. Um... Yeah, so, and I mean, even Jirachi, I mean, the T-Wave helps a lot, but, and there's a Scarf Jirachi, and it, it, it tricks, and I don't know, I'd, I think it would have been better to go to uh, Fori there on the trick. I mean, you gotta get those spikes down, otherwise the Dialga's never going to die, uh, unless you, like, it switches into, see, there's a Thunder, and, so this Lugia could have been incredibly annoying with the spike down and not letting it take the trick, but now when it did take the trick, then it's basically wasted. And uh, now the Jirachi gets the U-turn off and the Fori is left without doing anything. Uh, so, now, and, and the Blissey can potentially, you know, shrug this Tina O off, unless it runs Outrage, which is also pretty old school. But it allows Groudon in, and the Lugia is ruined, and I mean, there's still the Giratina O left. And the Groudon doesn't have lefties, at least, so it's not going to be, you know, shrugging Draco's off or something. But, uh, yeah, and I think, well, like, it's also physical Giratina, so that makes it tougher. So Lugia really had to be preserved there, and the team is very slow. It's uh, bulk up Dialga instead of Scarf. So, yeah, this, this, uh... This felt a little mishandled, and uh, it looks like Groudon is going to rip everything to shreds. And down Lugia goes. And, oh, come on now. I guess that's a really bulky, uh... I guess that's a bulky, uh, double dance Groudon, so that's why the Tina O ate the Dragon Claw. But that felt wasteful. You had to, I think you had to hope that it was a bulky double dance Groudon. Because even if a Shadow Sneak crits, then, you know, it's not going to kill. Even if you get KO'd. So you have to hope and Dragon Claw into Sneak and try to get win with Blissey or something. So now you have to hope the Sneak crits. Uh, and even that wouldn't have KO'd. So yeah, you really had to Dragon Claw there. So... Uh... Yeah, so that was a... I, I mean, stall definitely can be pulled off in this game. And, like, it, it, you see with the Pokemon that August had, that it, despite the sheer threat of the max hazards very early on and the dangerous Pokemon, that it very easily could have, uh, you know, brought it back, especially with how incredible Lugia is. But you really got to be on top of the game. So, on to game two. Tentacruel, there's the Giratina again. The T-Spikes are obligatory. Dragon Claw over EQ might not have it. Okay, I think I think it can't have it because you would definitely EQ the Tentacruel if you had it because why would you not want to do damage to it? I mean, if it's like Dragon Claw, Sneak, Roar, Wisp or something, I get it, but I mean, I think um, 
Tina O, especially on stall team, if it is like the same team or like if it's the same team as before, then you are really annoyed by Heat Train, so you really need that uh, that EQ. And for some reason, uh, there better be a T Tar or something following up because I don't know why that Icy Wind was. I guess it puts uh, Tina O into Shadow Sneak or not Shadow Sneak range, uh, Spatial Rend or Draco range or something, but. I don't know, like, can the team not switch into Tina O that early on? Maybe it's just a choice. I, I don't know. I, I think I would have preferred to press, uh, not press, but preserve uh, Tentacruel. So Spatial Run goes off, and that high crit rate is on display as it crits Groudon, which otherwise would have been able to take two even with T-Spikes. So that bites. Um, I don't know if Groudon was the best initial... S well, I guess it needed Sun Up, but I think Heatran could have come in first... I don't know. It's uh, it's behind, but now he's got to go for a tox. Not a tox. I don't know. It does not have toxic or rocks or something. I don't know. But this is uh, looking the sunny route, which you know, still not bad. But got to get some hazard or some status pressure going somewhere, or else like this Drosh is going to U-turn out of the Heatran or the the Fory, I guess. And uh, oh, he just gets up rocks. Okay. And um, okay, well, T spikes helps. But yeah, if the Drachi just U-turned there and the La the Kyogre like ice beamed the Latias all day and Palkia just you know threw a barrage of powerful moves out, then you know that wasn't that was gonna be a very quick romp. Okay, I just wanted to make sure the music's still going. Um, so you really had to uh, get something going there to actually pressure. So there's uh, the, here's the Giratina. And uh, subbing confidently, despite the existence of Heatran there, is this finally going to be the day we see Call Mine, Sub Call Mine Roar? I've been waiting for it. It'll ruin all the Dialgas. Oh, it's Thunder. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool too. I can dig it. And now T Spikes are down, and Giratina's ruined, and Palkia is going to hate it, and so is Kyogre. So now some actual pressure in return. So there's the Protect, there's the Hydro. Uh, now, if it's non-choice, then it can still wreak a lot of havoc because you can't totally depend on the, uh, uh, it's, uh, locking into one move, but we'll see what else August has. There's a double to Jirachi, not wanting to, nice, oh, I, okay, I get that one at least because Palki is more expendable than Latias, so if it eats a Drake, because it's affected by T-Spikes, so if it eats a Draco, or a Spatial Rend, rather, then not the end of the world. But still, that one didn't feel... Uh, you know, at least now he knows the Palky is almost surely uh, choiced. So that's helpful, because Heatran's looking like a massive pain right now. And uh, he's going to roar around and Dragon Kyogre get that... Uh, I mean, he might win this weather war yet. It's he uh, not Lum or anything. It's uh, taking a poison turn. Heatran plus T-Spikes is just such a vicious combination. So here comes Tina O. I don't know how I feel about that. I think Palkia should have been sent to... I, that, that's such a, that felt like such a waste of Giratina because it's such a threat. And Palkia is like... You know, preserve the non-T-Spikes affected Pokemon over the T-Spikes affected Pokemon. At least... Uh, and now a double to Groudon on the Jirachi. Nice. Is it even going to be fast enough to... Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one, because now he loses the Weather War. It's not fast enough for to outspeed what I assume is a pretty slow Jirachi. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think that was uh, that felt like kind of a waste. If you like, if it held back, if August held back, uh, I guess if he pulls the spin off, he can still do it because Kyogre is basically dead now. And I mean, it's not impossible, and he's. He switched it in just basically to die to Heatran, so Heatran's looking really, really nasty in this. Uh, so for well, for he's not gonna get the spin off if it's switching into these thunders, but he can get, at least get a lot of spikes and ruin Palkia, so that's helpful. Ruin Palkia even further, rather. Heatran putting in work against the rain team in rain. That always makes me happy. Now, uh, the ground on sack. Who knows if that was uh, the most optimal thing. But Latias is now uh, poised to really pose a threat as we don't know what this Jirachi's recovery is. If it's Wish Protect, if it's Wish, if it 
you know, has anything like that at all. Well, there's the wish. And uh, now four is actually threatening to spin. And does it get a payback on the switch? It does. All right. So now we got ourselves a game. Is Palk going to come in here? And going to Hydro? We're going to Drake? It's going to Hydro. And, well, I guess the question is, is this last? I mean, if the last is something like a Swift Swimmer, then it can still definitely win. Uh, like a Kingdra can definitely win. It's... The last depends, you know, the Scarf Revenge Killing Capabilities of Palkia and the defensive core of Latias and Heatran. So Kyogre is getting sacked here. And uh, there's the recover. And, you know, Palkia's got one switch in left. Unless, like, some wish passing, passing antics get pulled off here. And, uh, oh, there's Thunder. Okay. There's Roar and Garchomp. Sea Spikes. I guess Salak can win. Well, Salak is actually really dangerous. Yeah, well, one of the... Not both of these are going to be Scarf. Yeah, okay, so that that is not a Scarf um, chump. So, he sacks... That's a good move, sacking Palkia. So, yeah, that's the problem, that he's got a... He's just too far behind. On the, I think if he didn't sack the grad, I don't know. Um, like he's too far. He, like he's so close to coming over the finish line, but he's got a. He just doesn't have enough Pokemon remaining to make it happen to withstand this assault, even with all these hazards. Oh, there's the. the well, it burns through the Habenberry, so this looks like August's win. And there's HP Fire doing nothing. Uh-oh. Uh, well, I guess... I guess that the Jirachi might beat the Heatran on its own. Which is kind of fascinating. And, and in... I mean, in rain. It'd be different if it was in sun or something. But... Oh, man. It really might happen. I guess he could even wish pass to the Palkia in rain. Yeah, it's doing enough, but... I mean, if, if Plume burns, but he I, all he has to do is beat the, well, well, no, because Protect uh, for Thunder PP, and if he burns, then I don't think he's even going to beat Latias, so he can preserve it, or preserve Heatran, well, there's the Para, and no burn, so now it's looking dicier, but before, it was uh, looking, it was more that, you know, if he burns, then he could just go to Latias and preserve the Heatran, so he has enough Pokemon that Palkia will die to T-Spikes. But now, now it's uh, looking a lot dicier. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no burn still. And no, there's a Para, so this, this one is over. And, uh, oh, there's the forfeit on the last turn, but yeah. All right, so that was the series, so thanks guys for watching. I will give some recommendations real quick to pad the length a little for the sake of, uh, you know, not giving away the results of in two games via, uh, what's it called? Uh, the length. So I'm going to recommend two Japanese movies. For, um, one is called The Face of Another. It's about a guy who was in an accident, and his... Uh, he has to go around with his face all bandaged up, and it uh, gives him some insights and goes some uh, insights into how humans may perceive each other. And uh, he talks a lot with his doctor, and they sit in the restaurant and just focuses on them, and the lights dim, and it is uh, it's hard to escape, it's, it, but just in the best way. And there's another one uh, called Demons. Now, I know there's like a lot There's a lot of movies called Demons, but this one is from 1971, I believe, and it's called Shura in Japanese. So, and it's possibly the most stunning black and white film I've seen, simply in terms of how good the, uh, the photography looks. So, it's worth checking out for that alone, because movies are visual art, and if it's just people talking at each other, then I would rather read it or, you know, watch it in the theater or something. But, uh, but yeah, this takes full advantage of its look. And it's, it's about a, uh, a samurai gone rogue who goes to some places that are 
really dark, even for... I mean, samurai movies are not exactly light, happy affairs, but this uh, this really makes, like, the other the classic stuff look like a child's play in comparison. It's not just a tale of brutality or anything. That wouldn't be very impressive. But the way it sets out the character, the main character's descent is really, really fascinating. So uh, yeah, those are those are great. And I will also recommend uh, a non-Japanese movie from the '80s. It's a horror movie called Possession. It's about a marriage crumbling in '80s Berlin. And uh, actually, it might be N seventies. I forget the exact year, but it's uh, it's pretty wild. It it quickly it starts out as this like kind of family drama, and you're like, all right, this is fairly standard fare. And then it really just without warning, it jump it it becomes bonkers. I I can't describe. By the end, it feels like a completely different movie, in the best way. Um, so I recommend uh, that one as well. And I will round this out with one of my favorite movies ever, uh, Persona. And I recommend it specifically not just because you really need my recommendation. If you know it exists, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but mostly because I want to recommend the fact that it is on YouTube. You just type in Persona 1966 full movie and it's just there. And it's 80 minutes long. And... It is one of the greatest things ever put to film. So, yeah, it's it's like uh, an episode and a half of Squid Game. Not even. <laughs> so I, th- I think uh, most people will have the time for it. All right, so that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you next time.